first of all, I think your analysis was very straight line. History doesn't run in a straight line. Kid, you cannot tell your neighbor he is stealing ducks when you are stealing funds. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for, for, for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're gonna go along that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got ADHD, uh -huh. ADHD. I got that like that. Thing. Oh, no, calm down, down, calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team um, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lou Taylor. You, 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 got, you got screwed. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, Michael Rodriguez. Because nobody wants to hear your name. Why you not freaking slapping in young? Why a man and slap a woman? Look, how are you deal with that? You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions. To, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, Kingdom, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you no, think no, no. I did is wrong. I don't no, want no. you to do that and you should not have done that. Hi, good evening and welcome once again to the Gildari Freddy Kisun Show. We also coming to you live on YouTube. You can get to the on the Guinness Critic uh, channel or on Daybreak News uh, channel as well. Wherever you are, whatever it is you're doing, welcome you once again to Guyana's number one show. Where it is that we cut into uh, uh, events that occur in Guyana. We also digest and we dissect uh matters that would be of most importance uh, to the people of guyana and around the world when it comes to uh doing what we're supposed to be doing on the developmental path of this country at the crossroads of this country this is where it all happens uh so tonight we're gonna have some uh, uh should i say part two let's hope so because it's it should be interesting we have among us uh, somebody who has been very interesting and I'm going to put that uh, his introduction in a very short while over to uh, my co-host Freddie Kisun. In the meantime uh, let me go just get a couple of things out of the way as usual because we want to get into the people's business tonight very quickly and not waste any time. Uh, as we speak right now a couple of the top stories that are happening and of course I have my views on that. One of them Royden Williams Smalley big fight happening the prison says the body belongs to us the families or at least some parties uh, uh, are fighting and says you should release uh, that body to us because um, he is uh, our family the prisoner is saying that because he escaped and escaped several times and he died while still in our custody or supposed to be in our custody he's killed while he's escaped um, uh, that we have jurisdiction the family is saying well he died and so we want him and so they're threatening to go to court that's in limbo but the prison is standing by its guns um there's some other uh, pieces that's coming out from that story there other stories that uh smally appear to have um, or his remains appear to have had some injuries not consistent with the accounts being given by the authorities let's see how that plays out last two days uh, uh three days uh, very heartbreaking news. Uh, two kids uh, died in a fire up in Mahaiko in the east coast of Demerara. It's not something I think we're losing our people too fast in a very unnatural way. Um, whether it's by road accidents, whether it's by misadventure, whether it's by mistake. Uh, those are not things. Accidents will happen, but uh, we need to be very careful. We need to pay attention. And the loss of the life of that soldier while fighting on the accounts that is given officially that is for uh, his car not to be hijacked or carjacked uh, by what appears to be bandits or who appears to be bandits 
um, when we lose our people like that, our young people breaks our hearts. Let us continue to pay attention to that. Freddie Kisson, good night to you, sir, and you will take it over from here. Hello, dear, wherever you are, based in different time zones. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We have a guest this evening that was here before, and our policy is to extend our gratitude to people who came on this program very early, not knowing whether the program would be a success or not, but they grace us with our presence. And we have been, been inviting them over the past two months because we're coming up to our anniversary. Our guest this evening is very, very controversial. And I don't think he would reject that. People say I'm controversial. People say so many other people are controversial persons are controversial. But we have a controversial person, nevertheless, very interesting. And this is a man who have, who has his detractors and have his supporters. That's the way of the world. We have people who will criticize us and people who will admire us. Our guest this evening needs no introduction, David Hines. David, welcome to the program again. I am going to do something that is outside of mainstream journalism. And I think I don't have a smartphone, but I can imagine what people will be saying when I do what I'm about to do. I could say, well, Freddie man, this is not the style of an interview program. No, no, Heinz has too much to say to waste time. But I'm gonna take my chance and do this thing. If it doesn't go down well, I still believe I, sh I should have done it. So here I go, David. You're walking down the road, and you get a call. Bring some black pudding home. And at the junction is a Portuguese lady selling black pudding for $60 a pound, and an African woman selling um, black pudding for $100 a pound. Which one are you going to patronize? <laughs> I'd rather not answer that question. <laughs> Well, it's, a, it's an obvious question to anyone. One, one selling it for $40 more. So you, you're not going to patronize the Portuguese lady? Quality matters. But both of them are um, selling bad, bad black pudding. What black pudding are you going to buy, Freddy? I will buy the black pudding that is cheaper. The cheaper one? Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. What do you buy the I can ask you that. Freddy has an angle. F Freddy would buy the cheap one. Uh huh. But when it would, tastes nicer, both of them, but both them have want, their But how are you going to know that? He would want the, the expensive the two one. Are known. He would want the expensive one as boxes. The two, um, <laughs> the two black, the two sellers are well known. But I've heard, I've heard that in the sixties, Portuguese women made better black pudding than. African Ghanese women, do you subscribe to that? No, I don't know. I don't know. And for me, the issue is well, for you. The issue for, me, for you is always for me, ethnicity. For me, the issue it's is always ethnicity. For, for me, the issue is was not about who sells what, is who buying where. And my position is that if something is selling in your community and it's selling abundance, buy in your community. Don't buy outside your community. But you didn't put it over that way. But um, having started in that tune, we'll now switch into the other. Um, uh, David, we had two very, very strong experience advocate of the rights of African people, their culture, their rights in Guyana. Ras Tom Dalgetti and then Mondi Vincent Alexander. And they both spoke very, very um, philosophically about the need for uh, ethnic unity. Um, they were very positive about um, Indian people. I want to ask you if you're going to use this forum tonight to extend an apology to five leading Indian figures in the PNC. When one of your colleagues at a meeting in Boxton said some very disparaging things about East Indians. And those uh, five Indians, they're, they're very top people in the PNC, not ordinary members. The, the, His Lordship, the Mayor, Member of Parliament, Gita Chandan, Region, uh, region 4, uh, Regional um, Chairman, um, 
Siram and one of the big names in the PNC, Ganesh Mahipal. You refer to those people as slave catchers. When you listen to Vincent Alexander and you listen to uh, Dalgetty, don't you think you should apologize to those people? Apologize for what? There's first of all, I think you got. First of all, you got your story mixed up. You you said. Oh, hold on, hold on, catchers. hold on. My Paul and them criticize Rondelaine. I didn't call them slave catchers. Gita Chandan condemned Ogunse, and I called her a slave catcher because my position is that if you on the opposition side and Ogunse is fighting for you and you are handing him over to the opponent, you are a slave catcher. And I use slave catcher to dramatize the seriousness of what she was doing. And you know what? Not one other of them condemned Ogunsi. I, 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 I was justified because I kept all the slave catchers from catching slaves in trade over. I, I, when I meet Gita somewhere, we will talk. Unfortunately, she put her mouth into something which she should have shut up. And the fact that she decided that she is going to watch a black man fighting for the dignity of black people and condemn him, I, my job was to ensure that I make her an example so that no other of them will go down that path. And none of, none other of them went down that path. I want to bring you to what happens. Uh, we would see stories or news from time to time within parliamentary system in the UK and around the place that there are independent voices or even within the parties mm -hmm. that you have a lone dissenting voice which take a matter of principle and to stand up for that. Yeah. Um, in this particular case, an Indian woman who is saying, I, I, I disagree with what you're saying because it goes against it. It assails um, what I stand up for. And she says that from her perspective. How could she be a, what a slave? Slave better? catcher. How could you be a slave catcher? No, if she, if she did what you said, uh -huh. if she said I disagreed with Ogunse, uh -huh. I would have no problem. She condemned him in an oh, atmosphere. I disagree and condemned you. Hold on. In an atmosphere where the state is Ogunse versus the state. And where Ogunse's liberty and his life is at stake. And you are on the side, on his side, and condemn him. There are times when you keep your mouth shut. And I'm, I'm unapologetic about that. Remind the people like said, what... Like, was... I said, like I said, at, 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 at a personal level, when I meet Gita, she and I will work that out because we have a fairly good relationship. So it was not about Gita, the person. It was about what she was representing at a particular point, a critical point in our engagement. Just for the sake of context, could you say what is it that Ogunse say that caused Gita? Context is important. Well, I, um, he is missing. <laughs> There's a huge, enormous, yeah. mountainous missing link yeah. in his presentation. Ogunse made a presentation that made Indian people feel very uncomfortable. Yes. And Ogunse pushed them into dangerous waters yeah. that he or Gunse and David and them created. When, if we could ask the operator to play his tape, he was saying that when African people rise up against the government, and this government, I believe, although the PPP and the PNC, Vincent Alexander said it, they're predominantly ethnic groups, but the government of Guyana is multiracial. Ogunse emanation was an advocacy for the removal of the um, government through the intervention of a force, of an instrument he said consists of black people. He never said the army and police as instrument of the state should involve in the removal of the government. He said the police force consists of black people and they will side 
with African people. And when they do that, it will over quickly. She then, and an Indian had a right to say, this man is advocating black police um, officers, a black instrument of the state to side with black people in an uprising. So the whole orientation was ethnic and therefore drove insecurity into Indian people. And she was probably speaking. He said, he, David, automatically assigned opposition status to her. He never asked her when she asked her if she was speaking as an Indian citizen of Guyana. I and I suspect that's, 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 that's what, what I'm asking. And maybe you want to respond. The first thing, will you listen to Freddie there? He has not listened to what Ogunsi said. Kip Nassimentu, I, as you all know, I don't agree with much. Hmm. He said it here that even the journalists did not bother to go and listen to what Ogunsi said. If you listen to Freddie and you listen to what Ogun says, it's totally different. Now, Freddie could infer from what he said. Mm -hmm. Freddie can um, uh, infer from what he said, that is what he meant. But that's not what the brother said. You can infer 15 things from what he said. He said that the army and the police should turn their guns away from black people. Some people interpret that to mean turn it on the government, not Indians. Mm -hmm. Some people interpret, interpret it that to turn it on Indians. No, no. Um, if we could ask our operator while we're talking here, uh, Kit Nascimento read out the actual yes. statement. If we could ask our but operator. But in the meantime, if I'm to take it, to get, I, I may make a mistake. That's not what if I'm reading it, and, yes. and I think you were admitting yes. there, David, yes. that there could be several influences. That's to be right. Caught. If I take it as an Indian, yes. I, I'm just saying, if I take it as an right. Indian, and I believe that what you said, you, Takoma Gonze, is saying that you're directing to me, an Indian man in Guyana. I'm not Indian, by the way. But I believe that you're targeting that against me and me as an independent, or I believe I have a voice within the PNC. And I said, what you said there is not reflective of my thinking. Right. Don't what, I have what, a right? What, because I inferred that, that I whatever what believe. I think you said, not what you said. Well, I think you said that. That's right. But you how you, could you then you got to turn wrong and say, I honestly yeah, got to. No, but you got to defend your thinking. Well, right. But you got to defend no, no, your but thinking. I, then I ask you. I said, oh, say no, what I said, he said. I said, and I, said I know. David, I know what Ogun said. That's why Everybody know what Ogun said. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I said also. How do us, we tolerate? How do we tolerate? You can play that part of Kitna uh, But Freddie, the point is, do we have a tolerance for independent voices in society who could say, if, if one of the ministers within uh, the PPP stand up mm -hmm. and says, look, this bill that you're about to pass, I believe, it is, it is wrong. Would you say that he's a slave catcher if, it's, if he believes? Okay, that thing that was passed the law that was passed with the with the um, electric bikes, m the majority of Indian people ride them up in burbies. Mm. And I believe that that law that you're passing is against the Indian people in Guyana. I take it and I say it, am I slave catcher too? And I believe that you're targeting Indian, me as a PPP minister or maybe a parliamentarian, and I say that. But I, I'm just taking it from the perspective, maybe Gita is wrong. Everybody would have the opinion. But do I have the right as an independent voice to raise my voice? Yeah, you have. And I have a right to defend. Right, right, right. I have you a right don't have a right to delegate, vilify people because of the um, uh, a disagreement with violent advocacy. There's a line you draw. Um, now, I don't no, uh, if if our operator is listening, Kitna Cimento read yes, out the statement, yes, yes. and we can ask our yes. operator to play Kitna Cimento reading that statement. It was uh, the violent advocacy of the removal of the government through the use of an instrument he said consists of black people. Therefore, in a black uprising, it would finish quickly. And um, he never said 
And I think that is. I where understand it's being played. Uh, operator, could you indicate whether it's side playing? Check the um the messages uh, or or the people it's saying that there, there, the there's some um some some persons have sent the link there. Maybe if you could pull it up from there. But but um but we got we 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 but, got. But, but that's not going to change your mind. If it happens tomorrow, I will see this. All right, we seem to have some technical but, issues. But, 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 I'm, I'm, unap that's I'm right. unapologetic. I think there are moments when you've got to take some strong stand. And I had to take that stand at that moment. Well, you made it very clear yeah. that uh, that you were saying that because she broke ranks, it's a political issue. Yes, yeah, sorry. Not, not because she's saying it. She has a... Yeah, you said, a, a, you just said because it's a political issue. If, 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 if an Indian in the PPP said that, there are a lot of Indians in the PPP. Right. Who come to Mogun say, I didn't bother with them. They're not slave catchers. They're on the PPP side. She's on the opposition side. So why... I want to bring you along the same lines while they're trying to get it. While they're trying it's to not, get that thing. It's not just because she's Indian, because there are many, many Indians who condemn it's, those. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting... It's, it's an no, interesting. you are actually saying she as an Indian should not have felt this ethnic hurt because she is with the PNC and the I, opposition. And I also said that if, if Aubrey Norton wants to go down as an opposition leader who, kept, who caught slaves and hand it over to the master, then he will get the same treatment. So it is not just the Indian who is a slave catcher, the African slave catcher too. And if Aubrey Norton had done the same thing, I would have called him a, a slave catcher. And I said so publicly. What message um, are you sending to the Indians within the PNC? Are they or, or the opposition who are Let's say the PNC. Yeah. Keep your mouth out of some black people business. If you're in the PN, if you are in the PNC or the WP or the AFC, go in the Indian community. Put an alternative. Freddie program. analyst, I would love to hear your title. Put an alternative program to the Indian people. Keep your mouth out of black people business, especially when we are in conflict against a state that is attacking us. Well, you see, I'm clear about you that. See the, 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 the line <laughs> faults and the fault lines of his presentation is that deep in his Freudian mind, he is saying. I have the authority to describe what is black people's business. Yes. So, yeah, and do. you, you don't. I do. You yes, don't. I do. I am black. I am an so, African. I'm an African activist. I've been so all my life. You I, have no, I've earned that right. You have no authority. You don't tell me what I don't have the I am a Guyanese. When it comes to black people's business. I am Guyanese. Tell you Guyanese. And represent I have Guyana. A, we Guyanese have an authority. To comment and listen, that concern listen. Guyanese. Black people are Guyanese, Amerindians are Guyanese. Black people have a right to talk about the Madia fire. Yes. Indians have a right to talk about yes. wrong things black people do. Yeah. There is no exclusive, nobody has a monopoly, a sociology monopoly on race. There's a quarrel between Ravi Dev and Beto Ramarak and them and the PPP over Jagan. They said Jagan was a communist. So you know the quarrel. And many people ask me, David, make a comment. I said, no, that's Indian people business. It's not. But for me, it is. It's a sociological business of Guyana. Freddie, Freddie, you do not ascribe for me. Speak for yourself, not for me. Well, I could tell you when for, you're wrong for about me, my country. For, well, you can I say that I'm wrong. wrong for me, there's black people, Indian people quarreling among themselves about an Indian leader. I have no business in that discussion. David, in, no, a, modern that's, world, that's a, in a modern yeah. world like this, yes. where, where, where the internet and so much information has happened, a village is uh, click yeah. away in Antarctica here. Yeah. And where people are so very much aware of what is happening, uh -huh. you believe that the people are going to tolerate the kind of thinking or what you what you purport in the that, no i'm talking generally from both sides i'm mm -hmm. talking or, or all sides because some people say i'm neither black nor indian yeah um do you believe that people are going to sit down and really analyze and says that what you are seeing there that because i'm part of the political system that i shouldn't have an independent voice and therein i analyze a problem for me but, but um Gildari, I don't think you're defining independence correctly. Go ahead. I don't I'm think part you're... of a party, but I, I, I have I, a problem and I'm coming I, out I, independently. I, 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 independence is like when he and me voted for a government. Mm -hmm. 
campaigned for that government. And when that government came to power, we felt that that government was doing some wrong things. And he and me stood up against that government and said, you're wrong. We voted for you. We supported you. We campaigned for you. But what you think, what you're doing there is wrong. He and I did that. That's independence. That's independence. That's something that you belong to. That you feel strongly about but a government, strongly a government the... that you that you no, that's voted a, for. That's our definition you, of independence. That's, so, independ so, that's, that's independence. But, um, I want to. I want to get in. Um, yeah. If we continue like this, because of the volcanic nature yeah. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, the state, he has given. I want to. Here. I want to move on and maybe we could play that cemento actually read the thing. But here what I want to. Here what I want to confront you on. Yeah. I saw a program that you did for independence. Uh -huh. And on this program, the introduction, you featured the visages, the, the images, the faces of people. And they were um, Burnham and, and other African Guyanese, uh, Obama and his um, wife. I don't think Obama has done much for uh, United States or black people. And this was an independence thing. And you featured a whole set of people on Independence Day, and you left out Chedi Jagan's image. Freddie, you, 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 you have left not, out Chedi Freddie, Jagan's you, Freddie, you have not changed, you know. You left out Chedi Freddie, Jagan's you have not changed. Please answer the that question. Introduction Please answer. Not, that introduction was not played on that program. That introduction you, you were talking about is an introduction for a program. I saw it on the Hold program on. Independence. No, 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 you did the not. Are, Freddie, you did not. I, that is that introduction is for a program that I do that's called that that's called Black Matters. I have a separate introduction for Black Matters that I have for a regular. Well, somebody been tampering with your program. Well, you you tamper with it. You had it. <laughs> you tamper with it. <laughs> you had it. Freddie's, I know Freddie Long, and he does that. Along, he does that along the same lines. Um, <laughs> Freddie, no, you got it mixed up. Mr. No. Hines, along yeah. the same lines. Yeah. Um, we have elections coming up next week, local government uh, elections. There's some uh, sections, the PPP uh, section, believe they're going to make significant inroads, um, especially into Georgetown, a very big area. It's going to be interesting from a historical perspective to uh, see where it goes. Now, some people might very well argue they have the resources to really make a dent and, and take up a lot of those seats. But we also see some significant things because we're watching the players up there in Linden and other regions. In your analysis, I'm, I'm not sure whether you, uh, the first question I'm going to ask, have you been paying attention? To, a lot of to, attention. Right. Is it your analysis that the PPP has been able to, one, uh, reach across the divide, and uh, especially in Georgetown, and they've been able to attract the black voters, uh, which make up a significant portion of Georgetown? And the second thing, uh, from a countrywide perspective, do you believe that the PPP has lost or they've gained ground. Let no, me I, 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 I can't know that. We don't have polls. No, but uh, and in the absence of polls, I can't make a prediction. But what I, what I do know, the optics are there. There are people from the black community, supporters of the PNC, who have been who have gone over to the PPP. That's a that's a fact. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a critical mass that is going to. Um, cause any kind of big avalanche because what has happened is that once the PPP made that move, a lot of black people who had um, decided they weren't going to pay attention to the elections have now awakened, right? So in politics, you have action and reaction, right? So um, uh, the fact that the PPP has made that play um, it has it has caused the story in the black community. I think the turnout is going to be higher than normal. That's that's what I that's what I know. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but my if you're asking my view, is that the PPP has broken rules mm -hmm. of engagement. There's always been between those two parties that there's a limit to where you go, to what you do in communities. All right. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gentleman's pact. You, you go thus far, right? And the PPP has now broken those rules. 
it has literally gone in. You're talking in terms of the campaign and the deodorant. In terms of how you behave. Okay. Let me give you a practical Please, example. Yes. Let me give you a practical example. We all public meetings at the line top in Buxton. Mm -hmm. And the PPP, I think, at the last election went there. And uh, the reception was nice. Because people felt that, no man, you, 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 you can't come at the Mecca, our Mecca and thing. And what the PPP did for this election, they went into Buxton, they kept the meeting, they kept it at the road, they didn't go to the line. And it's, it's an agreement that there's a limit to what you do in our communities. There are certain things I would not dream of going to bad settlement and do. The PPP has broken that kind no, of... No, man, you are... Freddy, let me finish. No, let, let, him, let me let finish. Him, let me finish. The PPP has broken those unwritten rules. What's going to happen is that the PNC is going to follow suit. And it is going to worsen race relations in our country. There's even during Burnham days. You knew that there's certain things you wouldn't do. Burnham would entice people to cross the floor at the top. They wouldn't go in to Indian areas and raid Indians. And Jagan, what you mean by weird Indian? You know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, but Maybe I want, you can pretend that I, you don't know what I mean. I want. And Jagan would not permit a PPP to go in and re I make a distinction always between black people who I know are diehard PPP. I know them. My friend Shirley Edwards and those people. They've been in the PPP in the sixties, sixties. They are diehard luncheon and those people. So I'm not talking about them. Black people have a right to join whatever party they want to join. Indian people have a right to join whatever party. So I'm not talking about people who join a party out of conscience. I am talking about you going into a community. People are poor. They see in hell. And you are telling them, I'm giving you $40,000. Give me your ID card. You take out your picture. Shame you. Because those people have to go back in those what communities. Is that? Come on, in those baby. communities. Are you talking about the cash grant? No, I'm not talking about cash grant. No, that's normal. Not that's that's normal. normal. No, it's not Propaganda. normal. That it's is normal. not normal. But there was a limit to where you I, go. No, you, no, no. I want cross. to talk about this. Hold on, let me finish, man. I'm your guest. But you don't look like King of I'm your guest. You don't look like King of <laughs> I'm your man. guest. Yeah, yeah. Right. But you can also be a guest of <laughs> money. <laughs> you, you, look, the parties always encourage people at the top to cross, to cross the floor. All right? They never went into the communities and coerced people. That is what the PPP is doing. It is coercing Africans. Listen to Mr. Jack Dio today. He says, if we win, we're going to give resources to our councillors to develop Georgetown. But if you lose, you're not going to give to them. As the government, you should say, win or lose, I will give resources. Don't you think that's part of the propaganda thing that's happened? But Freddie, are you aware of this um, rules of engagement? I'm not aware of those rules of engagement. Those rules of engagement cannot obtain in any system that has an electoral system. I am older than him. I've been around longer. I don't know what rules of engagement. He's just said to me, I know Freddie. I know David Hines, and everybody know David Hines. Just go on YouTube and click, and you can see David Hines. I don't know what is this rule of engagement, but what I am saying to third parties, what I'm saying now to the PNC and PPP, do not accept this bifurcation that David Hines has just postulated. Go into people's villages, whether they are Amerindian or Indian, and ask for their vote because unless we don't have an electoral system, you're asking for power. But David Hines is saying the same but, um, thing. He is go, saying go, that no, there I, are lines that not to be crossed. That's right, go, I, I hope the PNC go into Port Blunt in this election, and I hope the PPP go into Boxton and, and, and ask for their votes. But they, they haven't, what have they been doing? 
They've been coercing people. They've been people. coercing people. Man, David, you They've been buying people. Man, David, you, you can people. sit. David, so that's your dignity. That's how you treat Freddy, African people. Freddy. PPP going there and buy African Freddy. Man, you, you know you're, you're being, you're being insulting to that. Freddy. 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 You're being uh, insulting to that. I, I got a license to do that. No, you don't have a license. You don't have a license to insult my guy, me, fellow guy. Listen to me. I don't care that a black or I, I when I started You to, cannot in, uh, insult people like that. When I started to write for the Chronicle, you told me, yeah. David Hines. Yeah. <laughs> like the dollar. <laughs> like, like, I know me, I know. I'm laughing because I know you're coming with some lies. Tell me, David you know, Hines. Tell me, David Hines, you will not last. And he was right. Freddie, you now start to write for the Chronicle. I think yeah. you will last. <laughs> I now start to write for the Chronicle. You know why? You know why? I think, I you know why you I'm going to laugh? Yeah. Let me tell you why. Because you're not going to no. book this. No, let, no. Let me tell you why. <laughs> let me tell you why I'm going to laugh. Yes, yeah, tell me. I am going to laugh because <laughs> when I write in the Chronicle, I see Burke. I see you, yeah. I see Ogunse, yeah. and I feel I have a protective, I need to provide right. a protective shield yeah. for electoral politics right. and for my country. Yeah, and that's what you will Right? For my country. And that's what you will last. Yeah. I will last right. because I am fighting the enemy at the gate. Why I would not have lasted? Why, why you Why you thought I wasn't going to last at Chronicle? I thought you were not going to last because of the nature of the PNC, and I was right. <laughs> and you know but what? You, you're going you to know last what? because of the nature you know? of the PPP. No, no, I ain't going to last because I am keeping the enemy at the gate of you listen to the things you say, you listen to the things what Bart say. Look, it's time. That, um, you know, some but people should run them off the road. Uh, you remember Bart said that? that from me? Bark. Oh Bark. Oh Gun say calls. You could put any type of semantic, uh, epistemological deconstruction meaning you want to Ogunse. Ogunse was saying that when black people raise up, not when Guyanese people raise up, when black people raise up, the police force is black and the police force would sign with, sign with them and you take down quick. Freddie, that you, is why I will last in the country. Freddie, you said worse than I that. I am keeping... You said worse than that when you were advocating uh, yeah, against, but you don't, against the PPP. Yeah, but guess what? Uh, <laughs> you, you, you finish? Yes. But guess why I have changed? Yeah. I have changed because the, the side that I've been with, I think they were philosophically inclined uh, to the freedom of the Guyanese people. Uh, then I see the ethnic thing uh, waving its head. But let's move on. I, I just want to tell you that I don't accept the insult of Guyanese people that PPP go in in Guyanese villages, you know, but black and Indian, and buying the They go to black this villages, they is past black people. That's what I'm saying. I'm not insulting black people. PPP is past black people. The PNC wouldn't do that. They put oh, PNC, the PNC, no, the, P, the PNC, the P is the PNC doing that in Indian areas? But how could you say oh. with such certainty that does not happen? I know, because I observe Guyanese politics. And what if I tell you that um, um, some PNC businessmen went into Lenovo and, and, and shared out money to Indians? What do you say about that? It didn't exist, and what are you saying don't exist? Can we go skip the propaganda? Freddie, Fred, stop being a propagandist. You just start All a right. lot of philosophy. Let me talk philosophy. Let's move stop on from the propaganda now. Um, Dr. Hines. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you believe, um, as a Guyanese, uh, no, not as an analyst, that we're losing a golden opportunity? And I keep asking our guests here uh -huh. that when we look at everything that's happening with this country, all hands on deck, that we're losing a golden opportunity to show the world that we're united front. We could uh, agree to disagree on certain things, but when it comes to certain things, like for this country, for the rights, that we lose a golden opportunity to show a united front? You can manufacture a united front, Gilari. Ethnicity is, is a deep-seated thing. Identity is very import, important for human beings. And governments have tried, empires have tried. The Soviets erased ethnic identity for, what, 70, 80 years. And as soon as the Berlin Wall fall, those people went back to their ethnic identities, break up the USSR. Identity is a very strong thing. And I think we in Guyana and the rest of the, the Caribbean, we at independence, we made a fatal error. 
is that we sought to substitute civic identity, Guyanese, Trinidad, with ethnic identity. And every time we reach a point where we are fighting over something, ethnic identity comes out, it says it's real. And we are making an error of not recognizing it's real. You cannot manufacture identity. Identity comes out of a process. When a child Paul goes out there with a bat in his hand, he, he ceases in our eyes to be Indian. He becomes Guyanese. All right? Wow. We all become Guyanese. When Carl Lupa marched out at, the, at Kensington Oval, the Belgians would put people to sit down on benches. But when Upa walks out there with a bat in his hand, the Bajans call him Sir Upa Guyanese. All right? So what I'm saying is that United Front comes out of processes. Now, I have no doubt that if Venezuela were to make a move on Guyana, we will see a level of ethnic solidarity in the name of Guyana that we don't Are you serious? That we don't and normally, once the PPP is in power, we don't normally... Certain people can side with Venezuela. Um, let me finish. Anyway, let yeah, me finish. finish you know, that we don't, I want to reply to that we don't normally see. So I'm saying that uh, this united Guyana that we're talking about has to arise out of something that is real and the people have to feel it. You can't manufacture it. And we have been trying to manufacture it. And every time the system breaks down, that ethnicity comes to the fore. And of course, people will say, well, it's David Hines who caused this or this body who caused that and so forth. No, no. We have to recognize that et ethnic identity is real. It's real. I live long enough to know that when India came here in the 70s and the 80s to play cricket, against the West Indies. Indian Guyanese no, that, supported Indian Pakistan. No, context and is I, everything. And I understood that. Context. But, 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 we don't call it context. But context saying, is everything. I'm saying that I understand And that. I reply to your I, un term. I understand. Because when South Africa came, African Guyanese didn't support the South Africa team. They supported Antony. Identity matters. Identity is what you're identified by. People, identity comes from where and who they associate with. Black people don't have to know lawn tennis. But when those two girls with a rocket in their hand, Venus and, 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 and Serena, and Serena, all black no, people no. feel a sense I know, um, of pride. I know when you finish, we ain't got time to ask question. When you Freddy? finish, we ain't got time to answer questions. Freddy, to ahead. answer questions. I, I, I am rejecting your identity uh, determinism. I'm the guest. You, I, I'm, like, uh, <laughs> I'm the guest. Your thing is to ask no, no. questions, not to reject what my Your thing is to talk all the time to be woman. <laughs> I am the guest. <laughs> Freddie, go ahead quickly. I have a follow up Let question. Me question. No, this. This, the way he formulated identity in heaven see is in a deterministic way. But social forces and the dialectics overcome everything. I'll give you some example. I lived in a world where people lost their lives because they were gays, because they were homosexuals. Killed, thousands killed. Today, we have countries where man can marry man legally. We had a black president of the United States. In his, his first term, his first term, he had significant white votes. He won in, he won a state called West Virginia that the Democrats never won in about 60 years. Mm -hmm. You see, these concepts you're talking about are Ireland, Ireland, Ireland after Italy was the most anti-abortion country in the world. A homosexual is the prime minister of Ireland. What are we talking uh, 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 Indian guy 
wasn't the elected prime minister of UK. Some white people in the Conservative Party came together, pushed out the white man named Boris Johnson and made him. For you ideological see, reasons. You see, you see these For right, ideological right. reasons. You see right. these things. What he's yeah. talking about is that these things are so deterministic that the dialectics cannot overcome it. I think Jagan and Desmond Hoyt, if given time yes. and resources, yes. would have encroached on this identity determinism yeah. he's talking well, about. Freddie, not... it, 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 look, you know why people, you know why races fight each other? For the pie. Yes. Now, if Guyana can have a pie, and I've heard he interviewed Clive Thomas. Yes. You know what Clive Thomas said? Uh. Gilari, this is what Clive Thomas said. And I looked at it and I said, We are on the road to success. He said so much money will be coming in. Yes. That the government will not be able to handle it. They will know what to do with it you could take those resources and thing. reach out to people but that's not the only thing you're I've preaching said, I, you're, you're preaching ethnic determinism no, no there's not ethnic the, the, determinism um, as as ethnicities, Hines, as, ethnicities as ethnicities we have met and we have parted there have been times in our history where the ethnic groups have come together he and I were part of a movement in the 1970s. David, David and stop the with you and I. Let's talk about no, 2023. No, I, 2023. You, you, want to have, you want to deny your history. I'm not denying your history. There were times when 12. ethnic groups in this country you don't give no, found You don't give your guess, um, your All host right? to ask okay. questions. They, 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 during the period on the 1970s and 1980s, uh, a critical mass of Africans and Indians found common ground against a government that they felt was out of control. And the, 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 the thing that we fought for, which is the end of that government, that end of that government triggered the ethnic parting. So when you were fighting against the thing, the ethnicities came together. When you solved the problem, the ethnicities when they separate democracy, Democracy in itself encourages encourages ethnic parting. I want to bring democracy you to democracy encourages uh, erosion of ethnic determinism as Trinidad did in the voting patterns. Yeah. I want to bring you to the next question uh -huh. that I have. The opposition in 2020, uh, yeah. according to the figures that we were presented, 218,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Your analysis of the opposition in terms of the work that they would have done, have they done justice to the 218,000 persons who voted for them and for the rest of the Guyanese who they're supposed to also be represented? Be, be, be more Let specific. Me, what do you mean by done justice? Let's look at uh, legislation. Have they served their country? Let's, man ask okay. a question, man. let's look at the legislations. What have they, have they done any independent tabling of legislations in our National Assembly? Have they taken on, uh, as as from a principal perspective, on the roads as a collective and said, look, we're going to stay out of parliament. Anything to fight against something. We What we've seen is a very quiet, and this is my view, based on what I'm reading in the news, what I'm not seeing, because a lot of what you're not seeing could also say in, that there's yeah. silence in the camp. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, I'm proposing to you, that I believe that the opposition did not do during the last three years, uh, justice to the 218,000 people, and by extension, they also represent the rest of the Guyanese as well. Your thoughts? The, um, opposition in Westminster system have little scope to do justice for their supporters. It's a winner-take-all system. Not and true. hold on, hold on, and there's a fusion of the legislative branch and the executive branch. The executive branch controls the legislative branch. All right? And so therefore, if you're in opposition to Koto and Arthur, it's hell being in the opposition in the Westminster system. So an opposition within the system is not able to do much, especially in an environment that has occurred over the last three years, where we have a government that is not even prepared to grant the opposition the conventional space like the deputy speakership and all those kinds of things. They've taken over all of that. Now, what that means is that the opposition has to go out on the road 
and use extra parliamentary ways. And if you're asking me if the opposition has done justice to their supporters in terms of using extra parliamentary Not measures. Not behind the opposition, parliamentary opposition, and the leadership of the main opposition. I am saying that insofar as they have not used the extra parliamentary power that they have, they have not done justice. They cannot do justice inside of the system. The system is stacked against the opposition. And for the opposition to have some space, the government has to be a charitable government to grant them some space. And this government has not been charitable. It has used its majority to ensure that the PAC, which was intended to give the opposition some thing, it has used its power to render that institution, that PAC, powerless. You, so there's not much see, um, there's not much the opposition could do I can't. inside the system. So what happens then is that the opposition has to go outside the I system. I can't come in. And, and the, uh, this opposition, insofar as it has not used the space that it has outside of the system, it has not done just. Um, I can, um, can, do I have do I have time on my own? Ask me, right ask, ahead, ask me a question. Ask me a question. First of all, ask you, me a you, question. you've painted a false picture of the opposition. Uh, you've painted a false narrative. Uh, the opposition has not used space that they could create themselves to win the hearts and minds of people. Now you are you are describing you are describing an opposition that A, refuse to concede an election, B, continue to insult African people by giving them our kind of Jim Cockburn, Ram Goat explanation of, of why they lost the election. Three. You asked me my view on the election? Every No, I'm, I'm talking about... I'm ask, talk, you, I can no, give you my view on the election. I, I, I know your view. Everything, <laughs> you just said the um, local government election. No, I, I, am election the, I, am the guest. I, am, I am the guest, man. Let me give you my view Every, on the yeah, yeah. No, I am. You're the guest. And... <laughs> The whole thing supposed to ask questions. Well, ask right. me that. The, the, he's going to have a score. So go, go quickly. The, um, the, the, the question is, yeah. you have an opposition that refuses to use the space that is available for them. Every major crisis in this country, the opposition sees a demonic hand of the government. Now, let me tell you something. That Madia Inferno was so global in its tragedy that that could have been used by the opposition to say, look, let's talk. Let's let, let's see yeah, yeah. how. No, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. that land must be charged with murder. Uh, Puyo Manik Chan must be charged. Uh, you can't have an opposition that behaves like that, and then you claim, uh, um, no, they don't have space in the Westminster system. You have. You have a political system where the opposition sees everything in zero sum terms. No, no, no. And, 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 and you're right. Except that you have a government who also that sees everything in zero sum terms. It, it, the government jailed opposition people when it came to power. It set a precedence. It demonized the opposition and the opposition logically is going to demonize them. You see, you, you see where I have a problem with Freddie, and to some extent you, Gildari, mm -hmm. is where you all start you have a with the is, is, is where you all start with the 2020 election, all right? So you can come and fool the people again. The 2020 you can fool people now, the, David. The 2020 election, there was rigging. <laughs> No, no, hold, on, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How could you have Reagan hold there? On, Who was in charge of hold on, hold on, hold on. We talk about attempt to attempt Reagan, right? Uh -huh. let, me, let me tell you. In 2011, there was an attempt Reagan. Let's talk about the 2020. No, 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 we come into 2020. In 2011, the PPP attempted to rig the election. And the, the, the numbers went up to the GCOM commissioners. And Vincent Alexander was able to see the attempt at the rigging and correct it at that level. No, no noise. We didn't hear my friend Freddy say, oh, Jesus Christ, the whole world coming down. That attempt to rigging went its merry way. 
Now, let's say for argument's sake that there wasn't a temp rigging in 2020. And I'm saying just as for argument's sake, because those numbers did not go up to the commission, for the commission to say, but these numbers are wrong. It's still in the court. The court hasn't pronounced How it. How would you describe Mingo's act? No, 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 no. I, the, the, the commission, GCOM, has not pronounced on Mingo's action. Because what, what Mingo is accused of attempting to do did not reach to GCOM commissioners. So GCOM has not pronounced. I, you, I think you all are missing a lot. Freddie, I am the guest. Okay. So, oh, God, man. GCOM has not pronounced on that election. And you disregarded what not. the court would have said and what they did. The court told GCOM correct if something is wrong. That's all the court did. And the commission of you inquiry. understand what he said? I'm not worried about the someone... commission of inquiry. He said there's no evidence that exists, despite uh, no, everything. No, no, I am saying that GCOM has not verified the fraud that apparently took place. But how could GCOM verify the fraud when the person who's been accused of doing the fraud is the man that's in charge of GCOM? My brother. When GCOM is finished. Uh, man is your brother. When, when GCOM <laughs> is finished tabulating yeah, yeah. votes. It goes to the seven commissioners and they have to sign off on it. That is how Vincent Alexander in 2016 was able to catch the attempted vote. The attempt at, at what this happened is, with me go at the top of that bill in the air? I am saying confusion. to you, I am saying to you, you can say the observers can say it, but there are institutions that have to sign off. And that is GCOM commissioners. They have the final say. Yeah, but they're saying but that that man I am, that went up on the top yeah, of the building can, that read out in front of everybody and said, where did you find that figure from? Anybody can, can say anything you want. Those people don't verify it. <laughs> My guest, can I ask a question? No, no, no. Let me finish. Those, but you're not going to finish. What? A thousand people can say what they see. And a thousand people can say, I didn't see that. Elections are verified by GCOM. And if there is a conflict, it's settled by the court. Hear what I want. And neither of the two has happened. Hear what I want. But anyhow, let's... I want to change the topic. Yeah, no, no, let's, no, let's, no, no. Let's, I want to bring you something. No, 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 change the topic. Let's say, I'm asking the question. let's say for argument's sake that there was an attempt to rig the election, right? Let's say for argument's sake, all right? Why the attempt in 2011 did not get the same currency as the attempt in 2020. Because one was played out in front of the cameras. Um, can I? You know why? Because there was regime change. Um, David. That is the difference between 2016 David, and 2020. David, Your closing David, statement, um, please. No, 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 no. They, they don't and have, that's what, they and have no closing statement. You, you, all, I wanted, you, all, you all are coming at the 2020 David, from a minimalist. David. From a minimalist David, partisan standpoint, there's something called at some point in the history of 2020. David, election, there's something called will like, come out. Could you look at at me? some point, David? Could you look Freddy at me? Freddie, want you look at yeah, this? I'm about yes. to ask a question, yes. David. The the a scientific method yes. of testing uh, people's um right popularity, right people's constituency. Mm. When you look, when you listen to you, yeah, and you listen to some party called the WPA, uh -huh. and you listen to other surrogates of the or, or, or of a certain type of thinking, you would believe that people, African Guyanese, are so oppressed that these people like you represent their aspirations. When you go out into the streets and you go into Guyana, you don't see that reality. I mean. Nobody knows who's Takuma Gunse. Nobody was there in the station uh, uh, um, behind the truck when he was being. Thing. No, who will Gunse speak for? Which substantial body of African Guyanese? We have a population that. 80% of it is under 45. Where is this um, emotional of, of pouring? I, I, I drive with Joshua every day. I see no flags of the PNC. If we're going to say, you and Clive Thomas and them are very smart, but you think you're smart. Clive Thomas calls his cash 
from oil revenue boxing proposal. Or go and say went and say if the police jungle black people, the thing done quick. It was at a meeting at Boxton. I am saying if you and or go and say go and hold a meeting, announce with your ball on meeting tomorrow night in Lodge, Charleston, South Rumfeld. Only you and Ogun say will turn up. You will turn up. <laughs> you will turn no, up. No, don't make the thing into a problem. You will turn up. Who speak, for, who you, speak uh, for African Guyanese? Gentlemen, time is up. African Close Guyanese the Tormund who speak for uh, them. Uh, Not uh, you. Uh, Guyanese the Tormund who speak for them. African Guyanese the Tormund who speak for them. Um, we've been told time is up. Could yeah. you, in the closing remarks, and Freddy, Mr. Hines for us? Well, look, um, I, you know, this program that you all are doing is a very useful program as all programs are useful and i come on this program because i respect you all i don't agree thank you with the orientation of the program you try to bully me though. but when i come on the program i expect you all to treat me the same way you treat, I the treat Freddy the same way. don't 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 debate me ask me questions hear my views i see freddie who's a very talkative man when some people of the french um the the middle class mulatto creole come here he's very quiet don't he's very, say, he's, don't very say that. he's very respectful to them no no i he, he abuse them be joking he abuse them in the like papers the next day but they are sort of friends so don't you want to be with those people like me old people come here am, and he treat them excuse me but when i see him when i when come he sees in, young that skinny skin he gets on closing statements please closing say i i i i welcome this debate <laughs> <laughs> I welcome this debate, but one of the things that I think one has to do is to counter false narratives. I think David and a group of people are going in a direction that I think do not have support among the Guyanese Well, people. then leave us alone. <laughs> leave us alone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was a wrap. Uh, Dr. David Hines, and then we also have Freddie Kisun in the house as well. Thank you very much. It's always good to agree to disagree. I, I want to, and it's always healthy to have Before you end, I want to ask David something. Um, There's a closing statement. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you know... Gildabi wants to know this. I want to know. Which, yeah, which place tonight we could go and have black pudding? Well, we can't <laughs> go. We can't go because after 10 o'clock, you don't be on the road. You're a coward. You just go more early. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, thank you for joining with us. I hope that you would have enjoyed. We've given you something to think about tonight. And of course, uh, the guests that we have here, everybody has something to say, even Freddie. Uh, so you guys remain safe on the roadways uh, we want you to have a very good weekend we're going to be back with you same place same time on Monday so you take care stay safe you don't want to lose any more lives it's been a pleasure coming to you this is again Diary Freddy Kisuncho thank you very much to Dr. David Hines for being with us again